So now we're finally going to switch on a PLC and make a connection between TIA portal and PLC or PLC SIM if this is what you're using. Alright guys, so what we've got here is a new beautiful shiny S7 1200 PLC. This CPU is 1212C ACDC Relay. And first thing that you will see when you have a look at it, if you haven't had a piece of industrial automation in your hands before, is that there is no power supply. So how do you connect it to the power and how do you switch it on well before i tell you that i want to show you something else i want you to go to support.industry.siemens.com and there's a search bar and search this number here it's 6 es7 212 1be40 0xb0 or if you have a different model of plc use the number that you have and search for the manual you're going to find all the necessary information that you need to know about the plc what it has what it doesn't have it's it's a great source of information so whenever you you have a problem you don't know how to use some some function there's a good chance that it's going to be there all right so now let's get to the point i'm opening this flap and i see a panel here and it has screws on it there are some contacts now what do i connect here so let's have a look at this drawing here all right so we've got first set of contacts here there is an arrow pointing down here, which means it's going inside of the PLC and it's 120 to 240 volts AC, which is a standard voltage that you have in your socket, whether you are in US or in Europe or pretty much anywhere else in the world. It is going to be somewhere between 120 and 240 volts AC. So you need to get a cable and you need to connect it here. Just remember one thing, whenever you're working on anything that has something to do with current, make sure that the voltage is not there, that switched off, that the plug is out from the socket. This is actually not the typical voltage that we're using in industry. The typical voltage in industry is 24 volts DC because this is a safe voltage. So it's not going to do any harm to your body. So most of the sensors that you will see, uh, all the lamps, buttons, um, pretty much anything will be powered by 24 volts DC. Yeah. There is 24 volts DC here and arrow pointing up, which means we could power up some sensors from these PLCs. Next thing here is this part of the panel, which is for 24 volts DC inputs. Uh, and again, here we have 24 volts DC. Whenever there is 24 volts coming inside, uh, the PLC will interpret it as a one on this input. Whenever it's zero volts, the PLC will interpret it as zero or false. So this is how digital inputs work. And now we have analog inputs. Analog inputs, they can be different. Let's have a look here. Inputs two times 10 bits resolution, zero to 10 volts DC. So there are basically two standards for analog inputs. One is zero to 10 volts. Another standard is zero to 20 milliamps or four to 20 milliamps. In this case, this uh, module accepts only zero to 10 volts. All right, so the last thing that I want to show you, actually two things is this socket we're going to use this socket here 
to communicate with this PLC and uh, we're going to connect a normal Ethernet cable here and it can also be used for Profinet communication. And the last thing is this set of digital relay outputs. We have two groups of outputs here from 0 to 3 and from 4 to 5 and we can use two different voltages for each of the group or even two different type of voltages so AC and DC. Uh, that's all for now I'm going to talk about it with more details a bit later but now let's get to work and try to switch this guy on. All right guys so what do we have here besides from the PLC? We have a cable we have a cable that's going to be plugged into the socket and it has a plug like uh, typical one in Europe and this cable has three wires here okay I don't know how well you can see it there is a green and yellow wire there is a blue wire and a brown wire green and yellow is protective earth blue is N neutral and brown is for L1 so I don't want to connect it directly to the PLC I want to connect it via these connectors and this protection. So the protective earth and the neutral one are going to go directly to the PLC and L1 is going to go through this protection. This is uh, 500 milliamps protection according to the manual. This PLC takes a maximum of 400 milliamps so it should be enough but we will see if it works properly so um let's let's get to work and please remember that before you do anything with the cables make sure that there is no voltage on this cable because you don't want to harm yourself or you don't want to destroy any equipment as well all right let's put the plc on the rail you don't need rail actually but uh, but i have one so i use it it's it's just more convenient like this okay so let's start with the protective earth and it goes to the third hole now the neutral one and goes to the second hole and L1 first hole so now it's all connected now we can connect the plug into the socket and then we will try to switch the PLC on all right, the plug is in the socket already, so now let's try to switch the PLC on. And it took more than 500 milliamps, uh, which means that this protection is not enough. But let's try a trick. And it worked. Now let's try to connect this PLC to the IA portal and see what happens. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do I'm going to connect to, to the PLC. So I want to have a connection between TIA portal and PLC. So to do that, first thing I need to do, I need to switch on the PLC, um, like I did a few minutes ago. And I'm going to connect, uh, connect the PLC with my computer with this cable. So one plug goes to the laptop and the other plug goes into the PLC. All right, so I have a physical connection now. So now I'm clicking on the PLC here. I'm selecting which PLC I want to connect because I can have more than one PLC. And I'm going to device configuration and it's selected right now. So there's this tab here when you click on the PLC uh, there's Profinet interface. You can set the IP address. So the IP address uh, I have here is 192.168.0.1 
It was here by default and I don't really want to change it because I don't need to do that. A lot of customers I've been working for have some uh, IP address poll for PLCs, IP address poll for for engineering stations where engineers work to, to make their programs. I don't have to really change the address here, but it's good to know that this setting is here so that uh, you will be able to change it when it's necessary. Uh, next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to click this go online button. Remember that this one has to be selected. Go online. Type of the PG PC interface. I have many, uh, many cards for virtual network cards. So I'm going to select this one because I know that uh, this is, this is the, the socket that I put the plugin. So this, and now you have several options here. So uh, you can either show devices with the same addresses, show all compatible devices, and show all accessible devices. I don't really know what is the address on the PLC because the PLC is brand new. So I'm, I'm selecting show all compatible devices. And well, the, the network is really small because there's only this PC and the PLC in the network. But uh, if you connect to a bigger network, it can show you some, some more. Start search. And here we are, we have an accessible device, it's S7-1200. This is, this is pretty much the one that, that I want to connect to. So I go online. All right, the connection is failed because the online target could not be reached. Okay, let's try something else. Uh, the address doesn't match, I guess this is, this is the reason. So there are a few possibilities why it could have happened. And uh, my first guess would be either it's difference in the firmware or it's our networks are, are different. So I'm going to go to the network settings and, uh, and see properties here. Uh, Internet protocol version 4. And I'm going to go to properties. For the PLC, I'm using the network 192.168.0.1. So I'm going to use uh, a similar one, 0, 2. Okay, subnet mask, like this. Download to device. Do I want to save these settings as default for the PGPC interface? Actually, I'm, uh, most of the time I'll be programming the, the PLC with this kind of settings. So, uh, so yes, it's, it's compiling the configuration. Let's pray there are no errors. If there are some errors, we're going to correct them. Uh, but the, the program is empty, so so there should be no errors and load all right finish um all right so so it's working the the plc is still in stop mode all right let's go to to the diagnostics and switch the plc to run mode and the PLC is running for the first time. There's no program on the PLC, so it's not really doing anything, but it's on. And if we put some program on it, it will be executing the program. So I will put some program on the PLC in the next video. Before, uh, before that, I will also show you how to download the program to the PLC sim, because I can imagine most of people watching wouldn't have a real PLC on their desk. This is the next thing that we're going to do. All right, so now I'm going to go offline and I'm going to try to connect not with the real PLC, but with the simulated PLC. So I'm going offline and, and the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to select this PLC. It was selected actually. So I select this PLC and I click 
start simulation. So what it's doing, it's going to switch on the program uh, that simulates the behavior of a real PLC. But also once I switch it on, uh, just like it says here, it will disable all other online interfaces, which means I will not be able to communicate with the real PLC, okay? So I go offline. I, I have this download window here opening PLC sim. This is pretending to be a PLC. What I'm going to do, I'm going to search for a PLC. And the device is called CPU common and uh, the address matches. So what I'm just going to do, I'm going to load. All right, load. So, so the thing about it right now is that there is not really any program on this PLC, so we cannot see how it's running. Here it says that PLC is in the run mode, and that's all we can tell about it, actually. Another thing, we can go to, you know, to the online diagnostics. We can go online, just like we did with the, with the real PLC, and well, we see that the that it shows almost exactly the same as what the previous one was showing. Uh, the only difference is that it got a bit crazy with the cycle time, but it's not relevant at the moment. Once we write a program, the PLC is going to behave exactly the same as the PLC scene. So, uh, so we can use it for the purpose of, of learning programming and while simulating our our program to check if everything works fine okay it's always easier uh, to work with the with the real plc but plc sim is a great solution as well and it's really helpful in the phase of engineering where when you maybe don't have a a real plc yet okay that's uh, that's all for now uh, join our facebook group link to the group is in the description below and uh, see you guys in the next video where we're going to uh, write our first program.